Well, just forget it. I'm not going back to school. Justin, would you please listen? Now, what do you mean, Justin, please? I don't listen to you and my folks long enough now. What do I have to show for it? Huh? Nothing. I want to get me a real job, making me some real money, you know? Like the job that was offered to me? Huh? Hey, listen. We can, we can get married, you know? We can do all the things that we want to do, you know? We, we don't have to do no more waiting. That's all I'm saying. I understand what you're saying, but... Hey, Justin! Hey, Justin! I said I am not going back to school. Then we're not getting married. Say what? I said no college, no marriage. Hey, now, you're talking crazy. No, Loretta. I'm not talking crazy. You are talking crazy. Hey, I gotta go back to work. We'll just talk about this later, okay? No, you forget about talking to me, sweetheart, ever. Goodbye, I... Justin. Trace is about done for. And Uncle Ben never even noticed. Your uncle's been sick, Greenberry. He's been writing, writing day and night to finish that almanac in time. Well, I don't think he's well enough to make that long journey to Baltimore town. You ought to tell him. You ever tried telling Benjamin Banneker he shouldn't do something when he set his mind to it? <laughs> I've tried, Greenberry. I've tried. Well, I could take his manuscript to the printer form. And make him pay the right kind of money this time, too. Uncle Benjamin ain't got the business head of a half with child. You sure about that, nephew? Meaning no disrespect, Uncle. But it's just that you always letting everybody... Let everybody take advantage of me, huh? Well, <coughs> we'll just have to make sure they don't do it this time. Greenberg. Did you take your medicine, Ben? Yes, my lady. You sure you feel up to making this journey? Yes, my lady, I've got to. Here's next year's almanac to get to the prince. 1797. It's nearly over. The season and the stars wait for no man's good health. At least I've never known them to wait for mine. Greenberry, you packed them sickle pears for the printer's wife? No, Mama, I didn't. I ate them. Every last one. Greenberry, you didn't. I packed them, Mama. Get up. What's your money, Mom? Just making sure it's enough. We're gonna buy you a fine clock with what you've got there, Molly. I promise you. <laughs> yeah, I reckon it won't be as fine as yours, huh, Uncle Ben? Your uncle was younger than you, Greenberry, when he made that clock. 22 years old, I know, Mom. And it still strikes the hour as good as it ever did, even after all of those years. What you make Mama want, Uncle Benjamin? Clock making is for young eyes, Greenberry. I don't see well enough for that kind of work now. You see all of them stars clear enough. <laughs> Remember how folks used to come by the house just to hear it strike, Molly? And get a free meal, too. <laughs> <laughs> folks always took on so strangely over it. Well, I guess you should be used to folks acting strangely about things you do hunger in. Maybe I should, Greenberry, but I'm not. Certainly not about that ugly old clock of mine. Well, I sure hope I can get one as good in Baltimore, Ben. <laughs> Greenberry, sir. Ma'am? You watch yourself there. Them city folks is not like us. They'll cheat you blind. Well, Mom, I know how to take care of myself. I just can't wait to see what Baltimore Town's like. I hope it don't start you to hankering for city life now, son. Greenberry's not gonna have time for city life. Not with all that farmland he's got to look after. You mean what's left of it? You ever regret letting all this go, Uncle Benjamin? This was all your daddy's land, right? All this and more. 100 acres, all told. Mm. Your uncle was a thinking man. He had a, a burning to study the stars, like them almanacs.
Come on, Anita. What you looking for? See a man and a girl on the road? No. You're a bounty hunter? Who you niggas belong to? We belong to nobody. We're free. You got your freedom papers to prove it, nigger? This is Benjamin Banneker, author of the...